Welcome to Real World AIP, the only channel on YouTube exclusively dedicated to helping you implement the autoimmune protocol. Today I'm making what I labeled in my recipe box as OMG it's bread <laughs> and, and some of you guys said you when I was going through my black box of recipes some of you expressed interest in this so I'm going to show you how I make it. It's very simple like most of my baked recipes are uh, very very simple and you're going to need to source two ingredients that I don't think should be hard to find. So the first one is green bananas and these are not plantains. These are actual just bananas. They're just unripe. They have to be super green. If the ones in your grocery store look like they're starting to ripen, ask the produce guy, hey, do you have any really unripe ones in the back? But uh, green, 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 regular bananas. And then you do need plantains. But I want you to see if you can get barely yellow. See, these are like just starting to get yellow. If they're more yellow than that, they're going to be a little too sweet. You can buy them green and let them ripen at room temperature. This is going to be a binder. It's going to help hold everything together and give it that stiffness and texture of bread. So green, 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 green bananas and just barely yellow plantain. So we're going to use those in equal portions. You can make as little or as much as you want. And let's proceed to the recipe. <laughs> One thing you guys might want to know before working with green bananas, and I didn't mention this in my green banana video because it, I didn't really think it was such a big deal until I started processing a lot of them and my nails, it will stain your nails brown. It will stain your knife, your cutting board. And to prevent that, you can wear gloves and you can um, put oil on your knife and that'll protect it from getting discolored. Just as a refresher, plantains and green bananas, same deal. Here's how you get them out of the skin. Cut the ends off, score it about an eighth of an inch in on two different sides. And then you just bind it in and you just kind of get in there. And uh, I mean, you know, there's a learning curve. <laughs> Sometimes you'll break a piece off like that and get frustrated, but. In general, that's how it works. The more you do, the better you get at it. Plantains and green bananas, same method. And in case you're wondering, why do I have to use green banana? Why can't I just use green plantain and yellow plantain? Because the texture won't be the same. The green banana has a very mild flavor. Um, it's more bread-like and it has a, a lighter texture. The plantain is like more of a hardener, it adds a little more of a chewiness and a hardness, a firm, firmer hole. I can't really explain it, but that green banana is the texture and the taste that you need to make it bread-like. So I wouldn't substitute plantain. I would do green banana and yellow plantain. All right, and to your blender, you are going to add, I'm going to do eight ounces each just because, but it doesn't really matter as long as they're equal parts and weight. So I have, um, this is eight ounces of that plantain and eight ounces of the green banana. If you have a blender with a tamper, this is a great use for it. But if you don't, it's no big deal. You're just gonna have to take the top off and mix it up every once in a while until you get everything blended. Here we go. Have I mentioned how much I love this Vitamix? My amazing, awesome boyfriend gave it to me for Christmas and I love it. I've been struggling with cheap blenders and I love this thing. I mean, Oprah doesn't have a better blender than I have. <laughs> they do not sponsor me. They have never given me anything free. You can do the same thing with a cheap little blender. Just it's gonna require more mixing and packing it down like I've been doing for the last year in my videos. <laughs> All right, so the only other ingredients we need to add to this dough to make bread are salt and sage. Why sage? Because it it has a nice strong herby herbal flavor that covers up any hint of plantain-y flavor. It just goes really well. It just makes it taste like bread and I'm willing to bet you can make my Thanksgiving stuffing with this. So look at this gorgeous dough. I just want you to see that. I mean that just looks like something with gluten and dairy, right? Okay, do this. I'm going to add, I'm going to use a full tablespoon of dried sage. And if you are fresh, even better, go two or three tablespoons. And I'm going to use one teaspoon of salt. Blend that up. All right, what do we do with this dough to make bread out of it? 
I'm just gonna use little itty bitty mini toaster size cookie sheets. I'm gonna grease them up with some coconut oil. The nice easy method because whatever's left over becomes hand lotion. Pour your bread batter. I'm gonna be able to do this whole batch in two of these. Less dishes. So if you're using a full-size cookie baking sheet, you're probably gonna wanna use one pound each instead of eight ounces each. Cause um, this amount that I have here is just like maybe a half of a full-size cookie sheet with these two combined. So for big cookie sheets, it's gonna be 16 ounces each of green banana and yellow plantain, barely yellow plantain. And then of course you'd need two teaspoons of salt and two tablespoons of sage. Now, this has to get loosely covered with foil and we're gonna pop this in the toaster oven at 400 degrees. I'll tell you how long it took when it's done because I didn't write that down in my recipe. <laughs> Alrighty, cook time. I took these out like 15 minutes ago so they cooled down a little. So the cook time at 400 degrees, covered loosely with foil, was 30 minutes. Then I removed the foil and I went five minutes. Now basically, all you're gonna have to do to have a perfect slice of sandwich bread is cut this in half, or let's see, can I fold it in half? Oh wow, yes I can. Oh my God. It's freaking sandwich bread there you go this is sturdy it'll hold up um i have my invisible liner on so i can't take a bite so um for presentation purposes i feel like the side that was on the pan is a little prettier to have outside on your bread i want you to see how well this i mean it really it just holds together really nice i mean it's you can spread some AIP mayonnaise on there, some thin sliced roast beef and lettuce and make yourself a sandwich. I mean, mm, it just, the sage gives it a really nice herby, almost like stuffing smell. Let me know if you make any variations or if you make it, tell me how you like it. Tell me what kind of sandwich you made. Put some coconut butter on there and eat it like toast. Soak it some sauce up in it with your stew or toast it in your croutons and put it on a salad. Breakfast sandwich bread. Oh, put some sausage on there. Oh, please, please put some sausage on there and make a breakfast sausage sandwich. That would be so good. So good. OMG, it's bread. <laughs> I hope you like this recipe. And if you did subscribe below, I post new videos every Thursday. Also, if you want to see everyday behind the scenes clips from what I bought at the grocery store or what I'm making for dinner, what I have for lunch, you know, my meal prep routine and stuff, I almost every day post clips on Lens. It's a feature of Patreon, but it's free to the public. It's very much like an Instagram stories. And if you do want to be a $2 and up oh, patron, I also post exclusive Patreon patron only videos once a month that I never release to YouTube. Anyway, I hope to see you soon and until then, be healthy.